One thing that's changed a lot in the last 10 or 15 years is the way people watch their movies. You, you can't assume as you make this one that it's going to be a big screen in a darkened theater, right? It's going to be somebody's phone. Yeah. If you're like my daughter, you're going to be watching it while texting a friend <laughs> and yeah. doing your homework at the same time. <laughs> that's can. great. Oh, don't. Yeah. <laughs> we can't help it. Yeah. <laughs>so from a technological standpoint uh, we know how regular movies are made we've seen behind the scenes thing and it's a guy with a camera and cut and right. but that's not how it works with an animated movie right isn't it someone yeah. sitting in front of a screen similar yeah, yeah. To sitting in front of a screen I mean we start for us writing as you would in, in uh, regular movies but for us writing is also drawing and so we have a whole story crew of people who contribute all these ideas through drawings and we do what's almost like a comic book version of the film we call a story reel or an animatic. Mm. And so we take these drawings, put sound effects, music, and dialogue to them, and you can basically experience what the movie is going to be like to watch it without having gone through all the effort of uh, animating it and everything. So this is black and white line yeah. drawings, yeah. slow frame crude. rate. Yep. Yeah. It's Almost like one a second or so. Yeah, and it's maybe a little basically more. a drawing per shot or a couple if there's a big piece of you know, motion or walking. Yeah. It's basically a simulation of the motion picture that from beginning to end with our voices in it sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. and my temporary. assistant played Joy, or whatever, we just yeah. watch it and we'd cut it together and we'd watch it over and over and over. Every three months we'd do that. But then once you get going into the production, you get animation, you get, well, you start with layout, which is kind of like our camera. And then we have, by that time we've recorded the actors already. The animators are like kind of part actor because they're the ones that create the, vo the, the expressions, the gestures and stuff like that. Um, and then the lighting experts and the cloth technicians and special effects and all these different departments. Our, our DP, uh, Patrick Lynn, one of our directors of photography, he says, you know, normally movies it's you know, lights, camera, action. And in our thing, it's, it's camera, action, lights, right? <laughs> we, we, yeah. Everything, everything yeah. in, in a movie is, uh, that you would know, a live action movie is sort of emulated in our medium. I mean, we, we do have, we build models, virtual sets with characters that take up volume and there's virtual space in these sets. As far as the camera's concerned, they're real. <laughs> we can truck the camera anywhere we want in those sets and get our shots, compose our shots, kind of based on our storyboards or plus more. We cut those together and then we lock that and then we animate those shots. Right? Hmm. And then we light those shots with, with virtual lights, not unlike this room. And, um, Which was interesting on this one because Joy herself as a character is also a light source. Yes, so, right. So right. as she's there, she's casting light onto surrounding characters and, and objects, and that was a whole new challenge for us. In, in the early days of Pixar, um, the software tools that you used to animate RenderMan was actually a standalone product you could buy, right? right. There was, you guys were in the software business. Yeah. Is, is that still true, and, if, and what, what software do you use to create these movies? It's a pretty big mix of different things, yeah. both internally developed, <clears throat> and we continue to re use RenderMan, as well as our animation software is developed in-house, called Marionette. But then we also use a bunch of other uh, off-the-shelf software uh, for modeling. So uh, this was the first uh, year of products where Steve Jobs was CEO of Apple and Pixar. Uh, major new products, the Apple Watch from Apple mm -hmm. and this movie from you guys. Uh, without Steve Jobs at the helm, what did he do at the helm? Did he ever make story points or was he really an administrative Money guy, or yeah, I always thought we got a great side of Steve yeah. because he uh, trusted us. He he would freely come. We'd invite him all the time to screenings and and say, "What do you think?" And he he would always kind of defer. He'd be like, "Look, I don't know anything about this. This is your guys' expertise." And then he'd proceed to give us some brilliant note that we we're like, "Duh, of course. Yeah. He's a really smart guy." He seemed um, Steve seemed very proud of the fact that these films, if done right, could last forever. Hmm. You know, he would say things like, "You know, the products I make are." Computer. Five years at best, or a doorstop, you know, yeah. a computer or a phone, or whatever it is. There's a certain shelf life there. But but Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is is we'll been still watch. with us since the 30s, and it still holds up. And boy, if we could do our job right, we could have something like that, which I think meant a lot to him. Download the Yahoo app to your phone or tablet.